All right, here we are, and welcome back. Are you ready for the fun to begin? So you have basically everything you need to become a freelance translator. You have your resume, which is aimed at freelance translating. You have a cover letter or email template. You have your online tools in translation tools and dictionaries, and you have your cat tool. That's really basically what you need. Plus you have your profiles on Pros and Translators Cafe. That is the basic fundamental things that you need to be a freelance translator. There are obviously more things that will help grow your business, but as of now, as a new freelance translator, you're ready. So if your resume looks a little bare, if you don't have much experience or none at all, that's completely okay. Today, I wanted to talk about volunteer translating and five or six amazing places that are doing wonderful things across the world and how you can help them out. So the first one I wanted to talk about and probably the most famous volunteer translation opportunity in the world is this. Translators Without Borders. Um, Translators Without Borders works all over the world, so they require many different language skills and combinations. And they do a lot of amazing work. So this is actually a nonprofit, as you can see here, and it's trying to spread knowledge throughout the world. Uh, if you're interested in their impact, which I hope you are, you can actually come here and you can check out so in North America, they worked with emergency response teams in, what was this, El Salvador, uh, reduced stigma and discrimination. In South Asia, uh, responded to crises. So they do things throughout the world, a nonprofit to help. Um, I actually like this one. This was really cool. Um, 15 Ghanaian translators in West Africa so they can have access to more health care information. So Translators Without Borders is a very serious organization, a very serious nonprofit organization. And to apply, basically, you just fill out this form. However, you will probably have to do a test translation. And test translations are very common in the translation industry. However, they are they should not be more than 500 words and that's a max 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 i know people there are translators who refuse to do test translations there are others who do large test translations but within 300 to 500 words you should be able to show uh, your knowledge and your ability to translate so First, fill out this application form, but on this application form, and obviously I will have the links in the lecture notes, I wanted to show you something. Obviously, you fill out your languages, your secondary languages, professional education. What I wanted to show you was here, your pros.com URL. So probably the most popular and famous nonprofit translation volunteer organization wants your pros.com. As I mentioned, when we set this up, pros is a big deal in the translation industry. And having a profile and a professional profile that you actually pay for shows that you are a serious translator. So I just wanted to get that, just keep pounding that in because pros is a great place for you to build up your reputation and create a profile. So the first one is our Translators Without Borders. And again, I will put these links in the lecture notes. The next one I have for you, which is also throughout the world, is called Global Voices. And it's basically a news organization that wants to translate all news stories into different languages. So everybody knows what's going on in the world. It is fairly easy, again, to sign up for the translators all you have to do is come down here to translators and then fill out this form 
very simple again. You may have to do a test translation. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't signed up for Global Voices, but don't be surprised if you do. Actually, don't be surprised if most agencies and people want you to do a test translation. They've become quite commonplace in the translation industry. So next, we're moving on to the UN volunteers. Obviously, the UN is, as everybody knows, a very well-known organization throughout the world. And being able to put UN volunteer on your resume will be a huge boost and agencies and people will love to see that. However, that being said, the UN is obviously going to require more things. They will probably require university studies in the subject. They will probably require a test translation and they will require some different things. So if that's not you, the UN may not be for you. However, if you have those things, the university, and you can do the test translations, and maybe a little bit of experience, UN volunteers could be a great opportunity for you. And moving on, we are going into the URIDU. And this is mainly focused for women. And their idea is to provide knowledge and education for women around the world. And they actually do it in a little bit of a different way. As you can see here, they have solar powered MP3 players for life, MP3 for life players. And it's basically they send these MP3 players out into the world to help educate women in poor regions and so they can listen to ebooks and they can listen to talks and they can listen to lectures without actually having to go and purchase something so i think this is a great opportunity for anyone to translate information for these ebooks and this content and so if you are if you're interested in helping educate women around the world the uridu could probably be a great opportunity. Again, these will be the links for these websites will be in the lecture notes. So we have a couple of more. The next one, the second to last one is the International Children's Digital Library. So if you're interested in literary translation, if you'd like to translate books, starting with children's li digital library is probably a great place to start. Um, they, as you can see, if you come here to these translators, they're basically every language out there, Afrikaans, Arabic, you can go down the list. And it's it's a huge list of volunteer translators. So to any language, to English or from English as well, usually from English, however, not necessary. So if you're if you want to look into literary translation, the International Children's Digital Library would be a great place to get some some experience to put into your resume and the last one i have here is translations for progress and basically translations for progress is a website to connect you with nonprofit organizations um, over here about translations for progress they say it's for two this was created to meet the needs of two different groups so the first one is organizations and the second one is students or professionals interested in building experience as translators. That is exactly what you're looking to do. And as it connects you with different nonprofits, they will be nonprofits from around the world, different subjects. So the amount of exposure that you can get for free is incredible. And to put on your resume non nonprofits is a huge boost. So I believe volunteer translating is the best way to get experience as a freelance translator. It gets you that exposure to texts. You can get free practice and sometimes feedback depending on the organization. And what I really like about it is it seems like there's less pressure. Obviously, these are very professional organizations and they need good translations. But 
not being paid and being volunteer, it just takes some of the pressure off of it, I believe. And you can actually, if you do get some references on your ProZ dot or your ProZ, yeah, your pros.com account, that can be incredible. That would be awesome. Um, you fill up your resume. And lastly, you can actually decide if translation is right for you. You may thought you may have thought that this would be what you were interested in. But once you get into it and you start seeing the relationship with organizations, it may not be for you. So this is a free way for you to find out. So this is our lecture and activity for today. Um, go ahead and check out these websites and sign up for a few if you'd like to. You need to start getting that experience as soon as possible to fill up that resume. So check some of these websites out and let me know in the comment section below if you have questions or concerns and I will get back to you. And I will see you in the next lecture.